We, um, a couple weeks ago, we finished a series on the fruit of the Spirit. You guys remember that? The fruit of the Spirit? Um, basically, it was a summer, a, whole, a summer series because it was between Robert and I, and, and uh, we, we did certain aspects, the different fruits of the Spirit. Where, you know, but the, the reason why we need the fruit of the Spirit so, so much is because we're living in a time when the world is getting even darker and darker. That's why we need to be praying. So I'm going to pray right now. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the spirit of wisdom and revelation and a knowledge of you. The eyes of our understanding is being enlightened. We know it's the hope of your calling in our lives and in this church. What are the riches of your glory, of your inheritance in us? And Lord, what is the exceeding greatness of your power towards us who believe? But we thank you for, for opening up your word to us, giving us an understanding of the times that we live. We give you the praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' precious name. Amen. And so, because we, uh, we live in this world, and trust me, I mean, if, if your eyes are open, you see that it's, every year it seems like it just gets a little bit darker, a little bit darker. You know, I don't want to be, you know, real negative or anything, but we are positive people living in a negative world. And so, we're, we're, we're supposed to be living for God in this Babylonian system that we, you know, that... We, we live in. I mean, we're living, I believe we're the last generation before Jesus comes back. I believe everything is coming together. Um, we know that there's a mystery Babylon in the Bible, and, and we know that that has to be established and developed. Well, you, if you have eyes to see, you see parts of it being already put in place. We're, I believe we're that last generation. So as children of God, we're called to be salt and light in the darkness of this world system. We're, we're supposed to be, bring God's kingdom to the Babylonian system that we live in in order to reach people for Jesus. Because that's, that's our purpose. Our, our sole purpose here is to reach people for Jesus. Reaching out to people. If, if we don't show them the light, if we don't show and display the fruits of the Spirit to them, they're not going to see Jesus. It's, it has to come through the body. That's where the body of Christ. The body of Christ is what the world is looking at. He's looking at us. We're members of the body of Christ. So, so we're the ones who display Jesus to the world. And if they are, if they're not seeing Jesus in us, they're not going to see Jesus because it, it, Jesus works through His body. And so it says here in Ephesians five, eight through fourteen, it says, "For you were once darkness." But now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. And I like what it says here. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. See, the way the world sees the light is by the fruit that we produce. The fruit of the Spirit. That's why we spent some time going over the fruit of the Spirit this summer. We need to, to let the fruit of the Spirit be released. And we'll be talking about that a little bit further down. But it says here... Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. It's the fruit of the Spirit. That's what's acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them, for it is unfruitful, um, for it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. And that's what we do. See, that's why people don't like us. That's why the world hates us. Christians, the, they give every other religion freedom, but they, Christians, they, they always are trying to prevent us from sharing. And, and it's because we shed light, we expose. When, when, when our light shines out, it exposes their sin. And, and they might not even know that we're a Christian. They might just see that, that there's something different about us. We, we don't cuss like them, we don't act like them. And there's something about us that just annoys them. We grate them. We get on their nerves. Has anyone ever had people just not like them? And you're just trying to be the nicest person to them, but they're just, you know, something about you just irritates them. Well, it's that light that's shining on the inside of you. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake, you who sleep, arise from the dead, and... Christ will give you light. We need to wake up. This is the time for us to wake up. Wake up from 
our sleep. Don't just sleep with the way the world is. We need to be awake to the things of God. Be awake to the fruit of the Spirit. Be awake to, to the blessings of God. Be awake to the anointing of God. We need to be awake to the, to, to, to the direction and the calling of God on our lives. You know, just wake up. You know, like Norma, she always says this. She says, don't hit the snooze button. You know, a lot of times, you know, Christians, we, you know, the Lord stirs us up. And then we were like, okay, in a little bit, and we just like hit the snooze button. Well, God's saying, no, it's time to get up. It's time to wake up. We need to realize that Satan is the god of this age. And the world, it's swayed by him. It's, it's under his power, his control. The world is not good. Now, there can be good people in the world. And I'm looking at a bunch of them right now. But, but the world is not good. It's not godly. It's anti-Christ. It's against the things of God. In 1 John 5, 19, it says, And we know that we are of God, and the whole world is under the sway of the wicked one. 1 John 2, 15 through 17 says, Do not love the world nor the things in the world. For if anyone, if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh... The lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. That's, see, the Bible is not telling us, hate God's creation. You know, you know, don't love the trees and the fish. and the, what, what the Bible is saying is, don't love the world system. It's talking about the system, the way the world is set up, you know. Who, who can you step on on the way up to the top? You know, it's a, it's a go out and... And it's all about me, selfishness. The world system is all about, you know, what I can get. It doesn't matter who I hurt along the way. It doesn't matter what you think. I have my rights. I'll do what I want to do. And if it's going to cause people pain, well, they're going to have to just deal with it. Because I'm going to get mine. You know, that's the world system. That's what God does not love. That's what we're supposed to not love. Is that attitude of, you know, that selfish attitude. You understand what I mean? That's the world system. The lust of the, the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Look at me. Look how wonderful I am. And so um, it says that the world is passing away and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. The world system is set up where Satan influences the world's governments, religions, the values. Values are always changing. The, the me, through media, the movies, things like that. Television, music. You know, music has a big influence on the youth. I mean, it influences adults too. But, but here's the thing. It's all within that, a lot of it's within the realm of the world. There's Christian music, sure. Um, there's, there's godly influences as, as well. But the world's way of doing things is not going to glorify God. And we shouldn't be a part of that. You know, they, they, they have their view of, uh, of abortion. You know, it's me, my rights, not the baby's rights. You know, uh, they have their view of all different things. Uh, the way they see traditional marriage. I mean, things are being forced down the people's throats. Just a couple of years ago, you know, um, gay marriage went across all 50 states. Just everybody, you know. Uh, every state now can, can marry them. You know, it's, it's traditional marriage is, is not traditional anymore. And, and there's a lot of transgenderism and things like that. The, you know, clothing... Is getting shorter and shorter. I think they're trying to save money on material or something. Uh, you know, because they, they, you know, less material, it costs them less, they make more money, right? So um, try to buy your daughter some nice uh, shorts that aren't like clear up. Well, we won't say what they're clear up to. But uh, it, it's not easy. That is hard work to try to find decent clothes for our kids. I mean, guys are easy. Right? We just, some, 
you know, getting them ready for school, you know, some shoes, some jeans, and a shirt. We're, we're covered. <laughs> Girls, oh, I'll pray for all you that have daughters out there. It's challenging. It's challenging. All right. So, um, you know, just the attitude of, of marriage. People, they, you know, they just want to live together. They, they, they don't want to commit to one another. The, our, the way that everything's going is just destroying the family, destroying the way uh, all our, and I'm guilty of this too, of the media, multimedia devices. It, you're so busy with them and everything that it just breaks down the family. It's, the world is set up to desecrate the things that God loves. Family, relationships, people. And, you know, people's attitude about forgiveness. You watch any movie and it's not about forgiveness, it's about revenge. What can I do? How can I, you know, uh, get even with the person that hurt me? Uh, you know, in the school they teach that, that you know, Darwinism, that we, we're a bunch of animals. And then we wonder why our kids are acting like animals. Right? Now, our kids don't act like animals. The world's kids act like animals. Right? Right, right, guys? Right, y'all? All right. Just making sure. But, uh, you know, if, if you tell people that that's all they are is, is just an animal, they went from the goo to the zoo and then to you, if, if you tell them that, they're just going to act like that. You know, it's, it's you know, might makes right. You know, it, if, if, if I have, have the power to take something away from you, then that's your fault. You're a weakling. I should be able to do it. You know, that's the world system. You know, treat people like prey. And, you know, you're, that the world system is like that. Don't live like an animal. You know, if it feels, remember a long time ago, uh, if it feels good, do it. You know, that the Nike commercial, just do it. And, uh, you know, it's just a selfish world we live in. Humanism is, you know, life without God ungodly. And then we wonder why there's tragedies in schools, why kids are going off and and you know, killing a bunch of other kids and it's it's uh, I'm sorry to bring everybody down, but it's the world. It's the world that we live in. That's why we need to be in prayer. That's why we need to be putting on the whole armor of God because we live in a dangerous place. We live in the darkness of this world. We need to trust God every day. Wake up and trust God because this world is dark and we are the light of the world. And, and the world is trying to put our light out, but we're just going to shine even brighter. Amen? But, but you can just see how this world set up. Even our calendar has, uh, you know, the first eight months, it's, you know, there's Roman gods. That's the, the, they're named after Roman gods. That's Our, our calendars are that way. Our... Uh, you know, our planets, you know, and even the days of the week, they're after the Greek gods. It's, there's, it's all through everything. But you know what? We are the ones who are living. We are the ones who are, are lights in the darkness of this world. Amen? Thank God for that. Galatians 5, 19 through 23. This is talking about the fruits of the the works of the flesh and the fruits of the spirit that we had just uh, talked about and it says here now the works of the flesh are evident which are adultery fornication see the world wants us to, to think that this is normal stuff that's why they, they put this stuff out there and, and they, they, they're trying to program see the Bible tells us that we're to be transformed by the what the renewing of our minds. Well, the world's trying to renew our minds too, to the things of the world. And this is what the world is trying to, to say is all right. It's just all right. You, you, you can't watch hardly anything on TV without two people living together without being married or, or cheating on somebody or, or anything. It says here, adultery, fornication. Oh, it's no big deal. It just destroys people's lives. <laughs> Uncleanness, lewdness. Idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentious. I'm just describing television. Jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, 
dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, fighting, and the like, which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in the past, in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. We are, that's us. We, we should be displaying these fruits. These fruits of love, joy, Peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, faithfulness to our families. There's so many men that have left their families and, and then the children grow up without a, a father. Faithfulness to our wives. Faithfulness to our God. Amen? The, the world does not show faithfulness. It doesn't show kindness or goodness or gentleness. And it definitely, the world definitely does not show self-control. You know, it's whatever they want to do. There's no control. They're out of control. You know, the days of Noah and Lot are prophetic pictures of the generation that, that you know, that's going to be here right before Christ's return. That's us. I'm seeing it. Every year I see it just a mess. I mean, I went to a play a, a while, just a week ago or two or something. It was Horrendous. I mean, you know, just saying, it, anything you could think of, it was just, yeah. It, 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 let's put it this way. It was all world. All world, you know. It was, yeah, okay. I won't get off on all that. But, yeah. But, uh, you know, I just looked to, like I was watching Sodom and Gomorrah or something. But, all right, shut up, Carl. Okay, go on down the road. All right. Luke chapter 17, verse 26 and through 29 says, And as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be also in the days of the Son of Man. They ate, they drank, they married wives. They were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them, destroyed them all. Likewise, it is also in the days of Lot. They ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built, and on um, one day. In other words, it's not going to be uh, a gradual thing. It's going to happen fast. In one day. One day, Noah went into the ark. One day, Lot left Sodom and Gomorrah. It says... Lot went out of Sodom, and it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. One day, one day, we are going to be raptured. One day, we're going up in glory. And everything is going to go crazy. I mean, it's all, the only thing that's really holding it back is the light. Us. We're, that's why the world hates us, because we are throwing a wrench in their machinery. We are the party poopers. You know? They want to just have whatever. Think of the most vile. Well, don't think about it. But the, the most vile stuff. They, they want no restraint whatsoever. And we are the ones who are holding that back. And it really ticks them off. I don't care. Let's make the world mad. Let's get some of them saved too. Amen? Let's be that light. The, the world was so corrupted at, at that time with Noah that God regretted that he even created man. Satan's plan was to have the whole world serve and worship him. That's what his plan was then and that's what his plan is now. And we are messing up his plan. Don't you just feel bad? No. Just we, we're, we're just, you know, we're troublemakers, I tell you. The world, they see us that way. We're, we're the troublemakers. Because they, they can't just be vile. Playing out vile. Uh, therefore, you know, what did God do? He flooded the world and he started over again with Noah and his family. You know, his sons, we know who they were. Shem, or Shem, I should say. Shem 
And he's the one who Abraham came out of. J Japheth and Ham. Now we know the story about Ham dishonoring his father. His father was naked after he drank some wine and he was naked and, and, and Ham uh, was being a ham and he dishonored his father, told his brothers about his nakedness. His brothers came in and covered his nakedness. And, you know, Ham, he was cursed. He, he got cursed. Ham actually was the grandfather, you know, nothing good comes from, you know, uh, if it's a rotten tree, it's going to have rotten fruit. And so Ham was the, the grandfather of Nimrod. Everybody know who Nimrod was? He was the, the maker. He was the evil ruler and builder of the Tower of Babel. You can read about that in Genesis chapter 11. And, and so Nimrod, he was, he was the builder of this, this big city, or actually building. They were trying to reach the heavens with it. The Tower of Babel. And, and God saw that, and He said, no, I'm not going to have that. And He destroyed the tower. And He didn't just destroy the tower, but he, he mixed up the languages. See, what they were trying to do is they were trying to unite the world under one evil empire, one evil group that was godless, so that they could, Satan could finally have that, that one world that worships and loves Him. That's... That's where the world's headed. That's not where we're headed. We're headed to glory. But that's where the world is headed. I mean, Nimrod means let us revolt or rebel. That's the attitude of the world. Let us revolt. Let us rebel. Let, let's just do what we want to do. See, God destroyed the Tower of Babel. He confused the languages. He created nations. And He prevented Satan's plan of ruling a godless, united world. Now, some people, you know, they think... You know, we're conspiracy theorists if we say that there's a new world order. But even presidents have said it. Presidents have said, you know, we want a new world order. Look it up. It's there. So it's not the conspiracy theorists that believe that there's a new world order. The Bible talks about, they're going to, in, in the book of Revelation, that there's going to be an antichrist. And he is going to be the ruler of, the, the one world dictator of the world. A one world, new world order. It's in the book. It's going to happen. Amen? It is. But there's also good things going to happen too. Amen. Praise God. We're getting raptured. We're going to be getting out of here. We're part of the kingdom. We're going to be saying great things. We are the light of the world. Jesus said that you are the light of the world. He said... If you have a lamp, you don't stick it under your bed. You don't put it under a bushel. You let that light shine. We're to be that light to, to a lost and dying world. We're to be like a lighthouse when a ship is lost out there at sea and they see the light. The, we are not going to see everyone get saved, but when we let that light shine, we are giving people an opportunity to, to come and, and, and find Jesus. That's our purpose here. We are beacons. For those in the world who, who are hurting, those who are like, you know what, this isn't working. I need a Savior. We're like, okay, here he is. We'll show you. You know, we, we have the answer. And, and they need Jesus. And so, you know, but we're, we're what's restraining. We're, we're restraining the darkness. The Antichrist isn't going to be able to show up with all this light. God sent Jesus, His Son, to redeem mankind and to create a people for Himself. The church will restrain Satan's plans until it is taken out of the way at the rapture. In 2 Thessalonians 2, 7 and 8, it says, The mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only He who restrains, He as in Jesus, amen, or the Holy Spirit, um, male gender, amen, we're part of the body of Christ, it says, only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. Then, and then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. See, Satan wants to take Christ out of, the, out of this world. That's what he did at the cross. Satan hated Jesus from the very beginning. 
He, he was like, I'm going to destroy him. He tried over and over again. The scribes and the Pharisees were plotting and planning, and they were failing every single time. Finally, they, they got to the place where they got Jesus. They put him on a cross. They crucified him. He died, was put in the grave. And on the third day, he rose back up. If Satan realized that that was going to happen, he never would have crucified the Lord of glory. Never would have done it. But he was so much hate for Christ because Jesus is the answer. So much hate for Christ that he's like, I'm going to destroy him. That's his plan. And that's, see, Jesus is still on the earth and he's in the earth through us. We are the body of Christ. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. The devil hates us. He wants us out of here. Well, he's going to get his wish. When, when Jesus comes back and, bring, and, and raptures up the church, takes the restrainer out of the way, we're going to be gone, and then he's going to have a, a complete mess. The world's going to have a complete mess. They're going to celebrate when we leave, and then they're going to wish that they went with us. A lot of them are, at least. There's, there's going to be some people that get saved during the tribulation period. And they're going to be like, whoa, wish I wouldn't have missed that boat. Mm. Amen? Or rocket, or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> see, see, here the world cries out for freedom of religion. But really what it is, it's freedom from Christianity. You can have any God you want, as long as it's not Jesus. Don't protect Islam. Don't you dare burn a Quran. Don't you dare, you know, make a, 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 a cartoon of, you know, anything dealing with the Muslim religion, making fun of it or whatever. That, that, they'll come against that. But you can burn a Bible. You can talk about Christians. You can mock them. And that's all right. It's freedom of expression. We're just having freedom of expression. But if you do that with any other religion, then, then you're a hater. But it's all right to do that with, with uh, Christ. Because that's the world's nature. They want to take Christ out of the world. They, they want to get the Ten Commandments out of everywhere. They want to take anything godly, truly godly, and they want to just get rid of it. That's the world. That's the Babylonian system. See, they call it freedom of, of expression when they desecrate the things of Christ. There's no protection for the Christian faith. You know, they can do whatever they want, but don't you dare speak against Muhammad. You know, we've seen movies, all kinds of movies out there, you know, the old ones, Da Vinci Code. There's, there's a TV show out called Lucifer. I mean, that's how blatant they are. There's a, there's a TV show out there and a program, and it's called, they actually named it Lucifer. And, and you know, it's just the way it's all set up. You, did you know, speaking of Lucifer, did you know that the Pope has uh, a, a telescope? And you know what the name of that telescope is? Lucifer. Kind of interesting, huh? Just saying. What, what are they looking for? Are they looking for life on other plants? Or are they looking out there to see when Jesus is coming back? Uh-oh, here he comes. You know, it's, it's an it's a interesting life, interesting time that we're living in. The Babylonian system is re-emerging in this last day, generation. And we are that generation. In Revelation uh, 18, 2 through 4, it says... And he cried mightily with a loud voice, saying, Babylon, the greatest fall, is fallen and has become a dwelling place of demons, a prison for every foul spirit, and a cage for every unclean and hated bird. For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. The merchants of the earth have become rich through the abundance of her luxury. And I have heard enough... And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins, lest you receive her plagues. 1 John 4, 3, it says, For every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard, from, which, which you have heard was coming. And is now already in the world. It was, even back in John's time, the, the Antichrist spirit was here. But in these end times, 
It's just coming, coming out of the closet, per se. Mm -hmm. you, you get that? Out of the closet? Mm -hmm. It's just coming out. <laughs> See, as, as people stand up for, for God in this wicked world system, God will back us up. One way or the other. Either we'll go into glory. You know? I mean, if, if someone's going to take my life, I'm going straight to heaven. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Yeah. I win. No matter, see, no matter what I win, I'm going to win. You kill the body, well, I, I got eternal life. Plus, I got a martyr's crown on top of it. Hey, you know, you just spread the wealth around. Amen? And, you know, but, but the enemy wants to destroy us. He wants to destroy us. But God will back us up. He's taking care of us. And I'm not going to read everything that, that I've written here, but uh, King, we know the story of uh, King Nebuchadnezzar back with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Uh, the king, he had all these different gods, and, and he, had, um, he had his gold statue, and he, he, he demanded that everybody fall down and worship this gold statue. And all of a sudden, three, you know, rebellious young ones. I think they were probably teenagers at the time. Pretty incredible. They stood up and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they, they stood up and they said, no, we are not going to bow down to your God or your gods. We are only going to bow down to God Almighty. And the king was upset and he was enraged. And he called his leadership and he called them forward. And they, they said, if you throw us in there, God will, will deliver us. And if you don't throw us in there, just know this, we're not going to bow down. So you don't have any choices. You're either going to you know, let us not worship your idol, or, or you'll throw us in and God will take care of us. And, and the king was so enraged, he, he, he had his strongest, most valiant men throw them into the fire of the furnace that was, that fire and that furnace was seven times hotter than normal and it killed the ones who threw them in. But when they went into that fire, they, they were, um, they went in bound up, but all of a sudden, the, the, the ropes were all broken, they were all burned up. But they, they were in the middle of that furnace and there was a fourth man in the furnace. The Lord was there with him. I'm here to tell you that no matter what the world tries to do to you, the Lord will be with you. He'll go through it with you. Whether you, you have a miracle, and, and just like the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and you're brought out with nothing wrong, or you go right into glory like Stephen did when he was stoned. Whatever it is, you win. Amen. You will always win with God. Amen. You're either going to win as, as, to see a miracle, or you're going to win as a martyr. And you'll be honored as a martyr. See, the, the Muslim faith, they, they think they're martyrs when they go and destroy people's lives and they kill themselves with it. But our faith is when we stand for Jesus and somebody takes our life. That's, that's what a true martyr is. It's not being an insane person with a bomb attached to them going and hurting people. Hmm. Amen? It's letting the light of God's love shine through us. Loving people, even when they are meaning us harm. Just like Stephen, when he said, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. He, he, he modeled what Jesus, well, Jesus modeled it to him. And he modeled it to us. Amen? Amen? We need to love people. Hate sin, love people. Amen? And, and they were brought out, and out of the fiery furnace, unscathed, didn't even have the smell of smoke on them. Nothing. And God was glorified. God would be glorified no matter what. When you stand for God in the midst of this dark world, when you stand against all the, the torrents of hell of this world, you are honoring God. You are glorifying God. You are a living sacrifice. And if they take your life, then so be it. Then you'll be a glorified martyr for Jesus. You'll be walking on streets of gold. You'll be blessed. You'll be a, one of honor. Hallelujah. One last scripture I want to share. It's in Philippians 2.15. It says that you may become blameless 
and harmless. Children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. That's what God is looking for. God is looking for us. Children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in this world. That's who we are. We are the light of the world because we carry Jesus. Amen. We are carriers. You are a carrier of Christ. Let's take him out to the world. Let's show the world his love. Amen? Amen. See, God desires us to invade the Babylonian system with his kingdom in order to reach people for Jesus. It's all about reaching people for Jesus. Therefore, we must let our light shine in this dark, evil world. That's what we need to do. Amen? Amen. I just want to encourage you. Next week, I'm going to be preaching about walking with God. Because that's what, that's what our earth life is. It's a walk with God. Amen? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for each person here today. I thank you, Lord, for making us the light of this world. Help us, Lord, to let that light shine even brighter and brighter. Lord, that you'll be glorified in our lives. Lord, that, that even when, when what we stand for and what we believe in is against the culture of this world, against their, their beliefs, Lord, I thank you that you are standing with us and that we can glorify you by being that light in a dark place. Let us be that lighthouse that those who are hurting, those who are broken, those who are lost can see us and see you in us and be drawn to you. And so, Lord, we give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory for it. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. God bless you. I want to encourage you to this week, let your light shine. Get out there and be a light. Don't act like the world. Don't talk like the world. Don't think like the world. Let that light shine. Be Jesus to those who need Jesus. Amen? Amen. God bless you. Shake hands. Show yourself to be friendly. All right?